Today is Saturday. Today is day two on the pallets. I'll likely finish these pallets today. I better bloody finish these pallets today because there's just the top parts to do uh, glue and staple those on. Then I can start the big, big, long, long job of assembling the covers. It'll take me days, I'm sure. It's not going to do itself, so we better get, get to it. Hang around and I hope you have fun. All right, so here we go. This always takes me a pallet or two to really get in the groove and get my process efficient. By the time I get efficient with it, I'm done. So, as you remember from last time, I've made these pallets. I've finished the underpinnings of them. Um, I just used my utility knife to scrape, cut off some of the squeeze out of this PL Premium I used. Just makes makes things look a whole lot nicer and it doesn't get in the way at any time. See this runner is sticking out here. That may be because the 2x4 is twisted a little and I'm suspecting that that's exactly why that is because these 2x4s were twisted a bit. When I'm done I'll just run these through the table saw and smooth that off as I weld the front part because one of my front pieces is cut to stick over and then I trim that. It makes a nice job. So I have seven pallets to assemble and I have four parts. I have four different parts for each pallet. For my first part I want it set these are all one inch wide, three quarter inch high pieces. So it's going to make a three quarter inch high shim around the bottom of each box. I want this shim set back one inch. So I just use the next part and uh, flush that up with my thumbs. I'll glue and staple that down. Here I'm using a I'm going to use two different staples. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I'm going to glue this first. Beekeeper's best friend, tight bond three. So I'll get that positioned here. And again, it's not fine furniture if you're neat though. No matter. This is an inch and a half medium crown staple. That's a big, big staple. Now, if you're doing the math, you will know that staple is too long for the part plus the deck. The deck is five eighths. In this case, normally it's three quarter. In this case, it's five eighths. This one is an inch and a quarter narrow crown staple. And those don't come through. A few more in because they're not as big. These big medium crown staples are very substantial. So for my next trick, I'm going to mark center on this piece right there because this part goes in the center and I'm just going to quickly mark it right there. See that goes like that. Normally I put the ends up next however. There's a little bit of an imperfection here. I'll put that on the inside. The top of these is what takes most of the abuse. So I'll put that down in there. The tight bond will hold it nice and firm. And I should never have a problem. A little bit of tight bond on here. And then more of my medium crown inch and a half staples. This piece is warped a little. thing really goes off with a bang. Alright, next 
to piece. Rinse and repeat. So I was going to take this screw out, I didn't, and now it's covered up. I'll take that one out. So, a little bit of, little bit of tight bond on this one. A little bit on the joint there. I'm not going to bother messing that around, it'll be fine. I've got one staple right in the center here. That's going to be covered up by that clip. And if I mark this and then measure that, I can see that I'm banging center there. So I can staple that down. To hold that nice and tight. And they're 8 inches long. I'm going to mark 4. And then I can put that right smack in the middle like that. I like this because I know my entrances are 11 inches long then. So if I need to make a screen for the entrance, I need to make a block or an entrance reducer, everything's all the same. You got 100 or 200 highs. Consistency is a nice thing to have. And that's it. And that's all dry. It'll get trimmed. 22 and 5 eighths from here to here in a table saw. Then it'll go to the wax dipping company. They will wax dip that. And after that, I will put screen over these holes. And then I will install the clips. One more little operation I like to do, and that's on the bottom. As you may recall me describing how these lock into the hive covers, um, occasionally when I'm trying to set a pallet on top of a cover with my tractor, this edge can catch on the cover. And when I make the covers, I'll run a small round over on that uh, piece. And when I make the pallets, I run a small chamfer, it's just a bevel, on this edge and that. So I do that with my handy dandy little Bosch Colt router. And that's just a quick little easy operation. Routers are handy, but they're noisy and they're dirty. So that is it for this pallet and six more to go check in the back of my pallet I don't want my drain holes at the front we'll get a couple sides here we'll get a couple backs we'll get a middle Rinse and repeat, as they say. Trim off the squeeze out so the router bearing doesn't hit it, mess up the cut. Everybody's got a beater chisel for this kind of stuff, right? If 
you don't, use a good chisel and that'll become your beater chisel.
So you can uh, see that I put on my hearing protection. I suppose I should have put on my eye protection too. I've never had a big problem with these small staples causing an issue when I drive spikes with my big spiker that's when you really want to wear eye protection for sure anyway these things can get kind of loud going off pulling the air chuck here is kind of hard on the ears and this little router can get kind of noisy too so this sure makes things a lot more comfortable makes my ears hot but saves my hearing so those are done except for uh, just after that glue dries I'll clean up the edges with the chisel and uh, run them through the table saw just to make all the edges real nice. They get dipped when I go to the dipper here in another, I don't know if it'll be a week or two. And uh, then I'll put the little screens on, screw the clips on and they'll be ready for use. So the pallets are out of the way for now and I'm on the covers. The first 13 covers are going to be a very small challenge beyond the rest. I have to mill some of my parts. This, this rabbit in these parts needs to be uh, 5 8 rather than 3 quarter. So those are just going to go through the table saw and cut the, the overall width of the part down by an eighth of an inch. <clears throat> because these first 13, if you may recall from earlier, are made out of that junk 5 8 plywood that I procured super cheap. Uh, so there's a little more work using that crappy plywood, uh, but again, money in the bank. I like to choose the nice side for up and I always start upside down with this piece I just cut. Pleased to see that it's not too short. I also ran into another situation where uh, when I'm putting the shim on the underside of the cover here, this lamination is missing. There's an eighth of an inch of lamination missing off of this so uh, if I use one of my standard uh, shim parts that's going to leave an eighth of an inch gap on that side of the lid. That won't work at all. So what I did was I went ahead and just uh, cut two, uh, two new pieces. I cut two because I've got another cover there that needs some attention in this regard. So I cut these two new pieces a little bit thicker. So with that an eighth of an inch thicker, this is a half inch shim, so that's a five eighths inch shim. Uh, and then those match up perfectly like that.
quick explanation as to what I'm doing here with these. As I mentioned before, I've done a full build video on these with assembly and explanation as to why I do what I do. But here I'll show you what I'm doing. And again, these I've cut down. These are 5 8 plywood. Normally I use 3 quarter. 5 8 was cheap. So I put up with the annoyance of changing things. I start with the, the upside down. So whatever side of that piece of plywood looks the nicest. And I want to have a nice, uh, a well cut feed hole in the top as well. That helps keep that plastic plug in place. So that's inch and a half, uh, 16 gauge nail. I'm using up these nasty looking cleats. So I can use the nice looking cleats on the nice looking covers, on the nice three quarter inch covers. I've got this little roller here. I don't know if I should be using it. It's just ain't getting glue everywhere. It seems if I what I do, I get glue everywhere. But whatever. Right, you do what you do. So I'm lining everything up with one side. Pick a side, right? And when I'm all done and the glue is dry, I'll run this through the table saw. It blew out a little bit. driving a nail endwise through there without having it go out a little. So as I was saying, I'll line everything up nice with one side. And when I'm done and the glue's dry, I'll run it through the table saw to make the other side real nice. You can see I've left some of my parts long. I don't know if you can see that or not. But these are slightly oversized. These are slightly oversized widthwise, so, so I'll cut some of that. And these are definitely oversized here. So now I'm going to do the inside. I like to have a little glue on this end cleat as well as the cover part along the edge. And again, start my long piece along this same side that is the smooth side where everything is nice and flush. Then my short pieces in here. And again, when all the glue is dry, table saw will come along and that will make such a beautiful edge 
on that. And then it'll get dipped at the wax dipper. And it'll be beautiful. So this side, we got this. This side, we got this. So what are we going to choose? We can cover this up. Uh, we'll make that the top. Arbitrary.
13 down, 67 to go. There actually is five there that I didn't drill. They're uh, made from the spliced together plywood that I made. But the 5 8 ones are out of the way. So that's the end of the special case parts. I think I'm gonna go in and see my wife. It's Saturday, so I like to spend some time with her on a weekend. We'll get this uploaded for you and hopefully you enjoy watching some of it. And uh, like I mentioned before, let me know what you want to see. I'd like to put some stuff up there that you want to see. Um, you know, just ask. I'll see what, uh, what I can put together for you. I'd, I'd like these to be entertaining for you. Have a good evening. And as always, have fun.